What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going into episode 2 of the beta save with Leon and we're going to start it very quickly um, because we've got a couple of things to announce. The first of which is a transfer deal for a position that we desperately needed it for. So let me show you who we have signed. So, so as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we've got D'Ambrosio through the door. A very cheap deal of about 650k. Um, there is a few other additions, obviously, like his loyalty bonus and things like that that we've got on top of there. Um, but we have got 1.3 million being deducted from the transfer budget. So we don't really have much left to play with at this point. But he can. the crucial component to the D'Ambrosio sale, or transfer to us, I should say, is he can play at centre-back and has decent stats for that position, which is mainly where we are going to play him. Um, but we do. it does give us an extra bit of cover on the right back and right wing back if we should go five at the back for any point in, uh, during the season. So that's the first big major announcement of this episode. We've got a player through the door to back up the other signing we made of Damian and the loan signing that we made in Abakar Celia. Here's a bit of a closer look at him um, from what I was describing last episode. As you can see, got quite a lot of potential, um, good athletic physical stats. And in terms of his defensive stats, I think he's looking pretty good already. And with a bit of potential and a few games under his belt and a few appearances for us, we might be able to develop him. Like I say, we have got him on loan, but we will have the option to buy him if we think he is the right player to bring in at the end of the season. Also, what we've got as well, um, as requested by one of you in the comments, uh, you wanted to have a look into the development center and have a look at what we've got in terms of potential in the youth ranks. And we do have a couple of standout players that I think will catch the eye. Um, we have sent a few of the younger players on loan to try and get them some experience and develop them a little bit further. But for now, I'll show you a couple of the top priorities in terms of development for me. We've got Mohamed El Arouch. I, I really want to pronounce that differently. Like I almost said crouch there, but it's Arouch. Um, basically, he's a, a midfield player. Advanced playmaker is his main position, as you can see with his stats at the minute for an 18-year-old. Pretty decent stats. Um, bit of development. I think he could be a top player, as is shown by his potential ability of four stars. So, yeah. He's sort of the main development priority for me. Another one is Florent Del Silva, who is a little bit older. He's 19, um, doesn't have as much potential, but does have some decent stats for the attacking midfielder role. And yeah, those are the sort of the two main priorities in our youth development at the moment. But as you can see, um, in the Olympic Lyonnais 2 squad, we do have a few others with high potential. Um, we do have quite a bit of potential coming through the ranks, which isn't surprising considering Leon's uh, pedigree when it comes to developing their youth and developing players through their youth system. Um, having that sort of back catalogue of players to be able to look at and develop further as we get into the save is going to be very interesting because I think we should be able to bring one or two of these through. So yeah, let me know in the comments, do you think we've got some good potential players here? Is there anyone you would like to have a further look at in f future episodes? Let me know in the comments. And yeah, and I'll do my best to show you what we've got a little bit more in the ranks. Um, if there's anyone in particular that takes your interest, let me know. And another thing that I didn't touch upon in the first episode was an, another thing I quite like the look of. Going into each match, you have a broad expectation of what they want you to do in this match or what they think you should be doing in this match and what the supporters also think you should be doing in this match. Now, so far, I haven't had any sort of differences between the two uh, parties. Um, in the first game against Ajaccio, we were expected to win on both sides. And in this one, with it being a away game to FC Lorient, they are actually saying that we should be expected to draw. And as you can see... Um, they're anticipating to be spoiled by some exciting attacking football, which after a 5-1 result, I can fully understand. Um, and they want, and the supporters in particular, uh, wanting us to continue using the 4-2-3-1 formation. So that's what we're going to try and do. And we're also going to try and give D'Ambrosio his full team debut. Um, but yeah, I just want to give you a quick look at that um, as it's something new this year. Um, obviously, they are leading a lot into what the supporters are thinking so far in the game um, and what the supporters are thinking of your club. Um, so a few interesting things to note there. So I just thought I'd quickly show you that. 
um, before I play the next game. So here we are then, guys. We finished the first game of this episode and we played against Lorient away. Um, it was a bit of an interesting one. The first the first game, first goal sort of came out of nowhere and then we got lucky with our first goal, um, Dembele intercepting that pass. And we dominated the second half, really. Um, and like our stats really showed that we were on top. And like you can see, they only had four shots all game and we had 24 going in, in into the end of the game. Um, and it actually was 2.85 again. The first half, there wasn't really any highlights to go from or anything showing us really that we were playing particularly well. But Lorient did get a decent chance and put it away. Um, and then, like I say, the Dembele chance, he intercepted a really weird looking back pass from the defender who was in like the middle of our half and decided just to put it all the way back to their goalkeeper. But Dembele intercepted it. And then we swung a corner in towards the end. And yeah, and we got the goal uh, that put us ahead. Um, the stats showed that we probably should have won this. Um, so I'm glad that we came out uh, with the win in the end. And like you can see here on the right-hand side, the XG tells tells the story um, of how things developed across the match. In that second half, we really did pump it up and go more attacking, uh, and it came through. And again, good performances from the two new signings in, in D'Ambrosio and Damian on the right side of the defence. So very happy with that. And yeah, overall... Six points out of six. I don't think we can really complain with that. So we'll take that forward and, and see where that takes us going into the next few games before the end of the transfer window. The one other thing I did want to note as well, which I noticed during the game, is Lorient had a goal disallowed at the back end of the second half and the VAR was instant. It came up, it said VAR, flashed off and then flashed back off to say disallowed. There wasn't like a 10, 20 second wait like there was in FM22. Um, so for me, that's a big positive. It saves a lot of time and a lot of deliberating. I mean, I know there was some tells in FM22, but now it just seems to be a lot more instant and like click of a finger and it's pretty much decided. So hopefully that helps us get through games a lot quicker. And yeah, hopefully that's something we'll all enjoy going into FM23 um, and enjoying this beta in the full game when it comes out. So yeah, just thought I'd give you a little update on that one. So here we are then, the second game's being completed of the episode. We've beaten Troy's 2-0. Um, it was a pretty simple game, all things considered. They had a man sent off in the first three minutes. Um, Tardio just totally cleaned out Awa. Um, Damian played a lovely ball through to Awa later on the 15th minute, and he smashed it into the top corner, and that was the second goal of the game. Um, we pretty much dominated the entire game, I'll be honest. Um, again, that right-hand side, Damian playing a key role in setting up our attacking phases and playing really well, and the entire back line played great. Um, but when the opposition goes down to 10 men, that's probably the result you'd expect. Um, and yeah, we, we come out with some really strong stats again. Again, we're creating lots of chances, and I'm very happy with that. And if we keep doing that, then I'm sure we're going to be fine for the season. The only thing I'm concerned about is obviously when we get into the the real meat of the season and there's fixtures coming thick and fast and we've got to rotate, which we had to do a little bit today because Dembele picked up an injury in training. He was he was only out for a few days, so it's not too big a miss. Um, but we had to put Lacazette obviously in last minute, um, and Dembele has been our main our main scorer. But fortunately, Lacazette and Iwa were able to step up and get a couple of goals for us today. So yeah. Three wins out of three in the first in the first three league matches, and we are now second by a goal behind PSG. So yeah, we'll take that as we go. And now we're heading towards the back end of the transfer window. We are trying to get a few loan players in to to try and beef out some of the attacking options and um, give a backup to Awar as well. Um, but whether or not that's going to be possible, I'm not 100 sure because a lot of the teams are wanting the wages to be paid and unfortunately we just don't have the wage budget for that because we are spending a little bit over what we have already currently so yeah if we get any updates in terms of positions or anything like that i'll come back to you again but if not i'll come back to you at the end of the next game and let you know how it's gone in the next match so yeah i'll catch you on the next part guys so for our next game guys we played stad dream and it was an away match and as you can see it, the result didn't turn out how we would have wanted it to they scored a goal in the first minute, and it was to be honest, it was a pretty good goal, as you're about to see in a second. Um, it was a lovely ball over the top to their attacking midfielder, 
And yeah, you'll just see this now. Like, he just clips it over the top of our defenders. Guitan finds the space in the middle and finishes it top corner. Like, absolutely superb finish. Um, and then, really, they were on top of his first half. And then Dembele kind of saved our bacon, really, in that second half by winning that ball and managing to see off a couple of challenges and took it away. Um, and to be honest, even though we had the majority of possession, we didn't create that much. Um we did start with Rain Adelaide um, to try and give Awa a bit of a break and a bit of a breather because he has started the first three games for us, um, but it didn't it didn't come off. Tete had his probably his poorest game for us as well. The back line did okay, um, but Stad Darim did really give us a hell of a game. And as you can see from their XG and the XG match story as well, they probably should have come out on top. We didn't really do much throughout, throughout the entirety of the match. Um... And yeah, like we, I'm happy to come away with a point because it keeps the momentum going and we've picked up points away from home, which is never a bad thing, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, first little bump in the road, shall we say. Um, and thankfully, we didn't, we could have easily lost this game. And the fact that we didn't is positive. And Dembele, once again, keeps his momentum going in terms of the goal scoring. And yeah, that's the, that's the next game done and dusted. So yeah, we're going to head. I think we've got one more game now before the transfer window and we have got a potential loan incoming um, to back up Awa because um, after show it, seeing this game, it's clear that we need a decent backup for him. Um, so we'll see if that one comes through or not because we've just slightly adjusted the transfer budget and the wage budget to make sure we've got a little bit of wiggle room um, to try and bring a, a decent loan in. So yeah, I'll show you that if that comes through and I'll see you on the next bit. So as I was saying, guys, we have got a loan through the door in the form of Yassine Adli. Um, we do have an optional future fee of 12.5 million. If we take a look at some of his stats, um, well, I did have a better scouting report than this. I don't know why it's quite showing up like this. But from what I'm looking to get out of him, I think he's going to fit the bill as being a really good backup to Awa and probably fill in if Awa gets injured. Or if something does happen to Rowan, he has to maybe play a bit deeper. Um, I think he is going to be a good backup. He has, obviously, his history is obviously in the French League. You can't see for this ugly mug down here, but he did used to play for Bordeaux. He played, he made 99 appearances for them. Um, so he is, he does have a good experience of the French League and the French system, um, having previously played for Bordeaux. And that hits one of our criteria for keeping the ball happy, which is to sign players who are who are from France, um, which we've done. And I think if he performs well, he may well be worth the 12 million. That's the optional future fee for him. Um, but obviously, if he doesn't pan out, then he, we just send him packing back to Milan. But yeah, that's another signing on the board. Again, we don't have a lot of money, so I'm trying to do the best with what we've got. And I think the players we've got in are decent fits in terms of what we need squad-wise. So after the first four games in the league, this is currently how the table looks. We are perched on, on second place um, just behind PSG, who already are two points ahead of us, even though we've had a unbeaten start to the season, we're already behind PSG, which isn't a surprise. The quality of their squad is obviously far and above anything else in this league. Um, so if they dropped points at this point, I'd have been very surprised. But when Kylian Mbappe is scoring four goals against Monaco, you know this team is its going to be a struggle for us to get above PSG, I think, in this save. But we're going to give it as good a go as possible. And there's a way to start that is by getting us firmly into Europe. And I think that's something we're well on the way to doing. Um, there's six points between us and seventh. So we are well embedded in the European spots. It's obviously about now trying to progress through the rest of the season and trying to get some more of that money in to try and utilize the European money that comes in and help us sort of try and bridge a gap and maybe nick some results off PSG maybe once or twice during a season. And that literally during certain seasons could be what wins us a title because no one else may pick up results against PSG. PSG have every capability of getting 38 wins here. So we have to try and pick up some points and results against them where we can and try and slow their progress down. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very difficult, but I think, I think we'll give it a good go at least, uh, especially during the course of the beta. But yeah, this is where we're currently standing at the minute. Um, we've played four games, as you know, 
decent results all around. We've kind of matched the expectation of what we've needed to so far. Um, let me know in the comments. Do you think I should be doing? Do you think I should have done worse? Do you think I should be doing better? Is there something you would change or something that I should look at in terms of the system or anything you want to have a look at in terms of the squad? Like, is there certain players you want to have a bit of a deeper dive on? Let me know in the comments. Um, and I want to say as well, thank you to everyone that has watched the episode so far. Obviously, this is the second episode of the series, and I'm going to try and at least at least have an episode out one per day before the full game release. Um, some days I may have two. I'm not going to promise that, though, but I'll certainly I'm going to try and have a, an episode out for you. So by the time we get to the full game release, we'll have 14 episodes plus. But I am going to leave it there. I will have the end of the transfer window be the start of the third episode of the series, and then we'll get really cracking into the meat and potatoes of the season and see what we can do with this Leon squad. Once we can't do any more transfers and no players are leaving or potentially being sniffed around by some of the bigger clubs in Europe. Um, but yeah, again, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, guys. Always appreciate the support on the channel. Thanks again to those who, who liked or took your time to watch out the first episode. And thanks to those who subscribed already. I greatly appreciate all the support. I'm St. Grimmy, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much, guys.